Hey there everyone, Erica here from Highway49RC. Today we are working on Project TC1000. That is what I've decided to call my touring car build. This is the first build episode. Go check out the last video. You guys will see some of the other products that I'll be using in this build. But let's jump right into it and uh, unbox this thing. I've already had a sneaky look inside just because I wanted to make sure everything looked okay. But upon first impressions, everything is really nicely organized. Everything is labeled with bag numbers, which is great. I assume we're probably going to be building by bag number. But let's see, you got bag five, six, six. That's the front bumper and wheels and tires bag, along with body clips and wheel nuts, looks like. Body posts, shock bag. It's like miscellaneous. Some Velcro straps. Some larger plastic components there with bag four. Now, here's something interesting actually that the person on Instagram that I learned about this kit from mentioned. Um, they said that the gears are plastic, and indeed they are. Even the differential gears are plastic. I'm pretty sure that there is a metal uh, gear upgrade for this kit, but um, I'll be interested to see how well that holds up. It's a belt drive also. The, the connection between the front and rear ends is, a, uh, is belt driven, which is interesting. Never had a vehicle like that before. And finally we have what feels like nice aluminum um, is it aluminum? I think it's aluminum. It feels like aluminum. Looks like aluminum. Um, chassis and some other various components there. Uh, a few decals which is always lovely to get and an instruction book that I will have a quick look at off camera. So let me do that and we'll jump right into building. Alright, I've got all my parts cut off their, car their parts trees um, ahead of time so it would make things a little bit quicker. And like I said, might have said before, we're assembling the differentials first. So going from first step, we're just going to start assembling, basically. I figured that I would show you guys um, most of the building process. I know some of you aren't necessarily going to want to see it, but I figure you can't see it if I don't film it, you know? Like, yeah, that was kind of my uh, take on that, so... You guys are going to get to see all my building process, or you can skip through and see as much or as little of it as you would like. But I figure for anyone who's building at home along with me, I figured that showing most of what I'm doing is probably good, and then I can warn you of um, issues or other things that I come across. Something I do recommend doing is laying out all your parts like I've done here and basically so that you can see everything so that when you're building it's not difficult to see um, what parts you need, where your parts are you basically know exactly what's going on so there's one side of my first differential got an o-ring in there, got a large flat shim in the bevel gear put that just to the side for now Basically, going to do the same thing on the other side. This is actually, I figure while I'm building, since if you guys don't want to watch me build or listen to me talk, you can just skip through, so I'm going to talk. Um, I don't really care what you people think. <laughs> so, this is actually the first time since my the first kit that I ever built. This is the first kit that I built since then. Believe it or not, my first kit was a Tamiya Duel Hunter which uh, was a fun build. I built it with my dad back when I was in the third grade, believe it or not. That was my first kit. And that was fun. And honestly, I enjoy building kits, and I haven't much because it's for a long time it was just more cost effective for me to just buy an RTR, which honestly, for being a kid in middle school, you know, like that was, that was what was efficient. So, because that's when I bought a lot of my RCs was in middle school. So. There's, you can see some of what's going on in there. Basically, same assembly as over here, just inside the cup. Level gears on there. 
Now, let's see, looks like it wants this O-ring. Mm, doesn't say to oil it, so I will not. Okay. Slide that on. Without it popping off and flying across the room, of course. I'm really grateful that they supplied you with some 2,000 weight diff oil. Because I don't think I have any that low, honestly. And to be honest, the quality of this kit, from what I can see, like the person said, is indeed quite nice. All the parts, um, the molds are actually are what I'm probably most impressed with. Um, the plastic molding is really, really nice. So if you get this kit, I definitely recommend it. It's a good quality. Okay. Put that down. And now we can assemble, let's see, the little cross here. Very nice. So basically I assembled the cross there. Let's zoom you in. Basically assembled the cross. There are metal shims on the outsides of the gears. And now we're going to fill up basically the rest of it pretty much to just above the center line of that cross. I didn't mention before, the KRC Magnetic Pit Mats, honestly such a great product. Like For building kits, like if you get a kit the probably $35 that it is, it's absolutely worth it. Um, I mean, I know that's that's the price of a servo, or that's probably like the difference in price of a slightly better servo for you, but um, honestly, the pit mat is probably something that I would get over a slightly better servo if I was like budget building a kit. Reason for that being is that you're going to lose less parts. It's not gonna basically wear out or break, whereas a servo can. Um, and it's, uh, personally I just think it's a better investment because you're not gonna lose stuff really. You don't have to bother with stuff like that in the future. Alright, so it tells you to rotate the gears just a little bit as you're filling it up just to get any air bubbles out, which is good practice. And I'm doing that slowly. That's probably good. Let's see where does it show to fill up to? Yeah, that's about right. All right, now we're gonna assemble or put on this question mark? No, not that. This that we built earlier. Without dropping anything off. There are notches that you have to line up on it. Finally, we're gonna just cinch it down with some of these little uh, countersunk flathead screws. And as a note, um, while I'm thinking about it, when you're tightening down these four screws on something that's circular, you wanna go across. As you can see, I'm going basically back and forth until I feel like it's well seated. That's just general practice for pretty much anything. If you're doing bead locks or um, doing like diff cups like this, it's like it's not 100% important, but it's still important. Like you don't want to tighten it down too much on one side and get something like seated wrong. Um, so I mean that in that sense, it's important. I'm not sure how tight these are supposed to be, but for the size of the screws and the fact that there's a gasket underneath there. Just kind of going by feel. And looking at the gap, there's this tiny gap. You cannot really see it between this piece and this piece. It's a little gap right in there. Sorry, it's a little out of shot. Uh, I'm just kind of going off of that and snugging it down. But I'd say that's good. And diff feels nice and smooth. Yeah, nice and smooth. Very nice. Beautiful. All right, moving on, Let's get to flip the page. Next thing we get to do, actually, still with this, is grab two of these bigger bearings. Bearings basically just slide on. 
bearings feel good as well. And now we put on, actually we get to use some of these, this is bearing holder A. Now these guys, there's a holder labeled A, or there's a pair of holders labeled A and a pair of holders labeled B. And they're not, the circles are not concentric. And what that leads me to believe is that this is actually a type of, um, a type of what? Belt tensioner. That's my, my theory, my grand theory. So this is A, A goes on this guy. Um, there's two A's, that's B, this is the other A. And it tells you in the, in the instructions that that's how it's supposed to be. So you've got these two basically bearing holders that go on either side. And I believe that that's gonna be a cam mechanism for tightening up the belt, maybe. It's a theory, but that part is now done. So on this guy, there's a little cap on the top of that belt pulley, and those caps apparently are supposed to come off, but it feels like they're already attached, so don't actually need any CA there. Good thing for me, because I actually don't have any CA right now. <laughs> I've used it all. Uh, oh, actually, that's not true. I have a little bit up there. All right, this is looks pretty straightforward. Ooh, tiny little bearings. Look at those little guys. Yeah, they're so cute. Shove those guys in there, and grab our spur gear. And there are little tabs, little nubbins, on the these drive plates um, that basically fit into the holes on either side of the spur gear, which is very nice. Ah, I see. You put two in from one side. Ah, I see. I see. So. These two are not countersunk, these two holes. Try and get in the, there you go, there's a good view. Those two holes, you can even zoom in a little bit more. Those two are not countersunk, therefore the screws come from the other side. And those two holes are countersunk, so that means they go in that way. Very interesting, and actually I have them set incorrectly, so let's quickly fix that. Rotate one side 90 degrees. And we can drop these itty bitty little screws in. Oh my goodness. Man, building kits is so much fun. I've not done this for a long time. I helped my dad build his uh, Wraith. That was fun. But, like, I haven't built a kit for me, like, by myself for quite a while. Like I said, since third grade. Which was, um, how many years ago now? Let's see. Twelve... Mm, let me try and think here. Uh, probably almost nine years. Yeah, nine years ago. That was actually nine years ago. I'm in 12th grade now. <sighs> Big senior. It's crazy. But yeah, man, I haven't built a kit for nine years. That's pretty. It's pretty insane. Again, don't want to get these guys too tight. The screws are very small. Oh yeah, there we go. I felt them cinch up. All right, nice. Whoop. Okay. There's that component complete. That's my spur gear. Motor will get driven off of this, and then a pulley will go to the rear differential, and a pulley will be going to the front differential, as far as I can uh, deduce. And on to the final item here. Let's see, what do we got? Right, I see what's going on here. So, this is a spacer. It's going to go on the solid axle adapter, and that's going to go onto this gear. It's going to line up with the holes. And we're going to sink three of these screws into there. That makes sense. The whole gasket thing, you know, honestly, that kind of makes, well, it doesn't, it makes sense, because it would make sense that there's a gasket there, for one, but also because, or it would make sense why it got mixed up, because these two pieces look extremely similar, the, the piece that I'm working on now and the piece that the gasket is supposed to be on, it makes sense why maybe someone at the factory would have gotten that mixed up, because they look like almost identical. Like, I wasn't sure which was which, honestly, when I first opened the kit. I was a little bit, uh, confused. Like, what's going on? Which side does which go to? 
So that's most likely what happened. Got our last screw driven in here. The plastic is really nice and tight on the screws. That's definitely one thing that can't be said of some other manufacturers. Um, like that the plastic gives good hold. Actually, Traxxas. That is one company that if you get some, one of their parts brand new, um, or like a, uh, yeah, either a part or like a, um, a vehicle brand new, their plastic has really good hold on, uh, the screws, which is great because then they don't fall out, which is never good. Put our bearing caps on either side and stick these guys in here. We got to make sure that when we're doing this, our... Uh, the, like the little crosses in the drive cups are aligned on both sides. That's definitely an important thing to make note of. Yep, all right, lined up. And we basically just run two screws into the ends, these long guys. So just screw them in. Cinched up, one more. Very nice, that is our last component completed. Now I'm going to go and address this thing, get that sorted out off camera. There you have it. There are the three basically drivetrain, central drivetrain components completed. We have a probably rear diff. Eh, no, that's probably a front diff. This is probably the rear solid axle uh, belt driven like pulley uh, assembly. And then we have our center spur gear and pulley drive assembly there. I did sort this guy out. It was missing the gasket, as it said in the instructions, it needed one. Of course, I did not pay attention to that, but that is fine. Basically, just took it apart, wiped off a little bit of excess oil, put the gasket on, reassembled, and that was it. So, thank you all so much for tagging along with me on this build video. Next episode, looks like we're going to be tackling the chassis and suspension, so that's going to be a whole heck of a lot of fun. So. If you're excited for that, make sure you subscribe, click that notification bell. Also, leave a like on this video if you enjoyed seeing me start to put together this 3 Racing Sacker XI Sport kit. And follow me on Instagram at Highway49RC. And uh, that's it for me. I've had a great time building today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see y'all next time.